certificate. Now, gold certificates are used in my trusts. I, <clears throat> I write trusts and I charge three thousand. Uh, I've never changed the price of my trusts. They're always the same price for everybody. My trusts are written in quantum language. They're 38 pages long and they are holding trusts. All the different terms that you can come up with by all the 25 million fiction trusts that have been published in the last 400 years are harvestable. My trusts are not harvestable. They're written in syntax. Uh, they have been perfected. There's no courts that allow them to be brought in. The gold certificate is a value. Now, all of you are sitting on a table. What is that table worth? You had to buy it at a store. 100 bucks, folding table like that. Those are nice tables. So that represents one-tenth of an ounce of gold. So if you had that as a piece of property and you wanted to secure it, and that piece of property was part of a corporation which was owned by the trust, because our trusts are technically a corporate structure under Robert's Rules of Order. You as a trustee would own this table, but then you would deposit it into the trust, and the trust would give you a gold certificate for one-tenth of an ounce of gold. If you had a real estate property and the mortgage is $200,000 and your property is appraised at $400,000, the bank has a $200,000 lien, you would put a take out a trust and you become the trustee but the sweat equity of your property is owned to you only. How do you document that sweat equity? Well if you are the trustee of a trust and you lay claim to the property you put a 200, 000, a 200 ounce which is worth $200,000 gold certificate claim against the property title. The 200,000 ounces, or the, the 200 ounces, is filed with your um, land court here in Sydney against the property title. Anybody wants the property, they have to satisfy the trust because it has a mechanics lien of 200 ounces of gold. So if they, even if they, you get behind in your mortgage payment and the bank takes your mortgage, the 200 ounces of gold needs to pay to you to clear title because you're the trustee that has a, a lien for sweat equity against the property. And the law for sweat equity supersedes all claims. The labor always gets paid first. So because the sweat equity is a is a invisible condition of state, it's not Federal Reserve notes, it's a, it's a it's an invisible the bank doesn't have a cl claim against sweat equity. The land doesn't have a claim against sweat equity. The government doesn't. So this is a part of value of your life that you accumulate through living and working that now exists out there as a real genuine asset. Because if you sold your property outright, paid off the 200000 to the bank and put 200000 cash in your pocket, you could walk down to the coin dealer and buy, a 200, 000, uh, buy 200 ounces of uh, gold kiwis at the coin dealer. So this certificate here puts a lien against that. We did, uh, Stephen there just filed six of these. Oh, wow. 12 of them for uh, one of our, a couple of our clients. So he knows how to do it. He's involved down here with this. We, uh, Stephen and I spent about 20 hours writing up the paperwork for one of these gold certificates and I probably got another 40 hours in to, to do that. That was only the first one. And then he duplicated it for the other 11. So he's, he's well to, up to speed on who to talk to, what court to go into, the people that manage the land court, that when, they, when our clients went in and tried to register these, they were thrown out. Stephen went in and explained to it, tried to do an explanation to them, and they listened but they weren't quite satisfied. I came down last time I was here, I explained to them the mechanics of, of who owns what. The land court officers wanted us to write trust for them so they could have their own gold certificates and register with the land office and then went ahead and cooperated with all of our filings. And so now they're probably gonna take copies of our filings and duplicate it for their own personal assets because they don't want it clipped by the government. That's how 
well, they've been paying attention. So the government likes what we're doing. It's giving them a no new vehicle. Now, if a government agency can take and put a, a genuine certified gold certificate in now time against assets that are fixed, they can fraction bank it at 100 to 1. In other words, if they say they've got a value of a property and it's owned by the state, and a state has a gold certificate on file that says the state owns that asset, they can take a gold certificate and print $100 million worth of Federal Reserve notes and put it in the circulation. All of a sudden, like the wheels are turning about, hey, there's a newfound way of doing business here. We have new assets that we can borrow money from 100 years in the future and go ballistic with. <laughs> yeah, I know. The wheels are starting to turn back there. So on page 72, <clears throat> so that's what our gold certificate is. The trustee owns the gold, the trust owns the gold certificate. But you as the trustee own the trust. So you manage your own assets. You do not create a trust and give it to somebody else. That's only in the fiction world. In the fact world, you are, your fact of volition controls the fiction of your life. And the gold certificate guarantees the sweat equity of your fact. And every, you have your claim of life to prove you're alive, you're alive life. And you have a gold certificate that has a live life condition of thinking for volition. And then you have a contract called the trust, which articulates your authority in now time to do, move, own, check, do checking, savings, whatever you need to have done and manage your life. You cannot run, a, you cannot run the trust into, a, into the ground if it owes taxes as a result of you using Federal Reserve notes to function, then you have to abide by the rules and regulations under, if you're going to use fiction money, then you have to listen to the fiction laws. That's a separate entity that's attached to the trust through what we call bailment. Bailment doesn't have ownership, it just has duty to perform through contract. So we took into consideration the different levels of authority in this. The first trust that we did uh, we started way back in 1990 and didn't publish our first one until 1997, seven years. And this was part-time research and along the road of studying trusts and learning and putting together these syntax packages and building our dictionaries and building our, all the different parts of this program in 75,000 hours. We probably put 10,000 hours just into the trust industry writing alone before we published our first one. And they've never been defeated by any government agency anywhere in the world. So, and I, you show me any trust written in any language from anybody at any time in the last 400 years and I'll bust it. And the IRS will